This clock here is a fairly rare and unusual one. It's the Carangela Electronics model MDC-1. It's a six-digit Numatron clock with a quartz oscillator, which was unusual for the time. I have it set to low brightness to conserve the tubes, because they've gotten a little bit expensive these days. I'll switch it to uh, high brightness with the switch here. You can see them a little bit better. On the back there's four controls. There's a hold run control. Hold of course uh, you know, stops the time from counting up. It's useful if you overshot the time. And then there's a fast set and slow set. Now this clock uses the MM5314 clock chip which was pretty popular in the early to mid 70s although this is the only clock I'm aware of that uses that chip in conjunction with a quartz oscillator. That chip was designed to run off of uh, the AC line frequency so they have to divide that quartz oscillator signal down to a 60 hertz signal. So that's the fast set button there. You'll notice it stops the time from counting up on the uh, seconds. And then the slow set also just advances the minutes without advancing the seconds. I'm not exactly sure how this works because other clocks I have that use the same chip holding down the slow set rapidly advances the seconds and holding down the fast set rapidly advances the uh, the minutes. Maybe some trick going on with the uh, the quartz oscillator, I don't know. The cabinet is supposedly uh, walnut and this part's aluminum and the front is a nice smoked plexiglass piece. So all in all it's a pretty sharp looking clock, at least in my opinion. Um, especially compared to the average, you know, kind of boring brown plastic wood grain covered uh, clock that was available at the time. This was also a fairly expensive clock. This model cost a hundred dollars back in uh, 1976 or so. And the quartz oscillator was a forty dollar option. You could buy the regular non uh, quartz version for sixty dollars at a hundred dollars this clock costs more than a comparable Heathkit clock like the GC 1092 a that would have set you back eighty dollars so I'm not really sure who would have purchased this clock at the time perhaps someone that just really liked the look of Numatron tubes because you were paying an extra twenty dollars for a clock from a company that just wasn't as well known as Heathkit Although perhaps the original owner of this got it on sale. You'll notice that it can be powered by 12 volts AC or DC. It's got an AC adapter attached to it now. It's kind of strange that it's got these screw terminals on the back instead of just a, a plug or a hardwired cord. It looks a little unprofessional to be honest. But you're not usually you know, seeing the back of the clock. I'm not sure what this is all about here. This uh, kind of faded text. At least part of that is information about the fuse. It says fast half amp. I'm going to unplug it now and I'll take the uh, cover off so you can see the inside. This is the original power transformer. This clock draws significantly more power than uh, most digital clocks do. The transformer is rated for 11 watts and it draws about 10. It gets a bit warm but not too hot to hold. To get at the uh, circuit or at least to see the circuit, you really only have to take out two screws. Taking the two screws out there lets the side drop off. And then you can uh, slide this plexiglass piece out of the way. And behold the tubes. So there's that MM5314N. There's the quartz crystal there. I believe these two chips here are used to divide down the signal from the quartz oscillator to 60 Hertz. Because Numatrons draw a significant amount of power they can't be directly driven by that clock chip there. 
So you can see there's a bunch of driver transistors down here. There's a significant number of diodes there. There's one for each segment of the pneumatron tubes. That's because this clock is uh, multiplexed and the filaments of the pneumatron tubes conduct electricity in uh, both directions, unlike an LED. Here's the clip for a 9 volt battery. I replaced the uh, filter cap and then this cap over here as well. Not sure what that one's for. As I said earlier in the video, I'm not sure exactly what would make someone go for this clock over other ones. My reason for being interested in this clock now is that it uses pneumatron tubes and there just aren't that many uh, kit or factory made clocks from the period when these tubes were being made that use them. They were a very short-lived display technology. I'm going to carefully pull one of them out. Um, I guess I'll go with this one here. These are DR2000 tubes. This one's dated 73-43 guessing the 43rd week of 1973. It says RCA Pneumatron. These same tubes can also be found with a rounded top. It's nice that they're socketed in case they ever need replacement. I've had this clock running on my desk for a few weeks but I'll probably eventually swap it out for another one just so the tubes don't get worn down. Those are a pain in the butt to uh, put back in there so I'm not going to take them out. Those tubes are probably more intended to be soldered in. They have wire leads pressed into sockets. Those are DA2100 tubes and they're marked Taiwan. Just for the heck of it I plugged it back in so you can see the tubes lit up without the cover in the way. Just got a non-zero time on there. I think it looks fairly pretty lit up. Obviously Nixie tubes are a little bit more striking but these are still interesting to me. Well, thanks for watching.